before I talk about the book, I just want to introduce my work and some of the other projects that I do. So I'm the creative director and founder of a graphic design studio called Transmission. Um, we're a small team of people, and we do a lot of um, work with different clients in the cultural, um, charity, commercial industries. But the kind of backbone of our work is a lot to do with um, creating books and magazines for different clients. Um, I started the studio about six years ago, but in the last four years, I've also written a couple of um, visual culture books, which are published by Thames and Hudson. Um, this is my first book called Collects Edition, Innovative Packaging and Graphics, which is all about the um, limited edition graphic design. It's all about um, special editions, deluxe editions, all created for the music, book, and magazine industry. So if you think about large format box sets, um, screen printed covers, that kind of gives you a rough idea of what the book is about. I'm also really, really interested in um, alternative print processes as well. Um, this is a really, really good example um, for the band called Shout Out Louds. So this is a box set, and inside the box set you get a bottle of distilled water, a silicon wheel, and a seven inch um, record as well. And the idea is that you freeze, um, freeze the water over the vinyl, and you wake up in the morning and you've got a playable uh, bit of ice, which is here. Um, it does work, I've tried it, it broke my turntable. So don't try it yourselves. <laughs> Um, I'm also really interested in the social aspect of graphic design and also tactile print. Um, so what the book is all about um, kind of the renaissance and vinyl and music and digital formats as well. This is a really, really good example of how you can introduce digital design and also tactile design for the band called The Flaming Lips. So this is a, um, a skull, like human skull, made out of gummy bears. So the idea is you could bring a group of people together who kind of tuck into the gummy bear sweets and then you eat into the jelly brain into the middle and inside the jelly brain is the USB stick with all the music. So it's all about bringing people together. So as I mentioned, the book is about limited edition graphic design. Um, so I took it upon myself to also curate a limited edition version of the book, um, of which we've got examples here. Um, so there are 10, I did 10 in total and commissioned some of the most famous designers and artists um, to draw directly onto the cover. So you've got one in the top left-hand corner is by Paul McCartney. This one's by Wayne Coyne from The Flaming Lips. You've got the artist Stanley Donwood and um, one from Nick Cave as well. The brief for every single one was exactly the same, and that was to reinterpret your artwork that's featured in the book onto the front cover. Particularly like Nick Cave's one, because if you see his last, um, his last album cover called Push the Sky Away, it's got a photograph of his wife walking nude across their flat, whereas for his interpretation of the book cover, he's got her covered up and she looks very demure. So I quite like the way that it's um, a sort of reinterpretation of it. And all of these um, limited editions were sold off at auction as well and raised £6,000 for the Alzheimer's Society, which was nice. Uh, there's me. So these books are really, really personal to me. And that is when my first book first came out and the first time I ever saw it on the shelf. I look sort of pleased myself, I suppose. Um, but what is really kind of important about it is that I put a lot of my personality and my heart and soul within to it. My girlfriend once said that um, these books are kind of an embodiment of my personality, everything I love and everything I'm interested in. So when it came to talking to Thames and Hudson about doing a second book, um, I had a mild panic because it takes about two years to make and there's a lot of work within it. But I try and put my personality within it. Um, so I started to try and think of ways that I could make it my own. Um, and some of those ways are trying to link minimalism with um, sort of society today and looking at the fast-paced nature of social media. And maybe this is a reason why uh, minimalist design has started um, to become prevalent. Now, every time I mentioned um, the idea of my book to all my colleagues and friends, they unanimous, unanimously said exactly the same thing. Um, minimalism is really easy. Put nothing on the book cover. That's all minimalism is. Um, and it was really, I mean, it made me laugh, but it just got me thinking about um, where did this come from? Where did this perception that minimalism is easy, where did it come from? Um, so I did a little bit of research and sort of, um, I found that the um, artwork from the 1960s, when uh, minimalist artists started producing work that was um, a reaction against abstract expressionism, which is very loose and very painterly and very free. Um, and there's one really, really famous case by this American artist called uh, Carl Andre. And he created this artwork called um, Equivalent 8, which is a large sculptural object, um, big tri triangle made out of household bricks. This was bought by the Tate Gallery in 1972. But at the time, the press just went like nuts over it. I'm just saying that it was a complete waste of money. Um, it was a waste of time. What a load of rubbish. And they were basically inferring that anybody with a pile of bricks would have made this artwork. 
But I think the point for me is the fact that anybody with a pile of bricks wouldn't have made this artwork at all. Like, they just wouldn't have thought about it. And I think that's quite important. And um, I think that was kind of the hangover for minimalist design. I think it still sort of lasts today. Personally, I don't think minimalist design is easy. I think it takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, attention to detail. I think you need a certain amount of confidence to work in it as well, because it's all about reduction. Um, so I wanted to try and do justice with my own design for the book as well. So the book is split up into three different sections. There's reduction, which is all about the, um, how you reduce decoration and design clutter from the page. Another one is about production, so you're looking at print processes and again how you can reduce ornamentation. And the um, final section is about um, geometry, so geometric shapes and flat colours. So having the book split into three sections also gave me the opportunity as a designer to play around with these pages and just kind of go off grid and have a bit of fun. So the book is split into three different colours, three different sections of grey. And on the left hand side there's always a geometric shape that references that section. So obviously here we have the um, less than design. But also wanted to play around a little bit with the type. So I wanted to push the title for this section, which is obviously reduction, and push it to the further edges of the page just to kind of create a composition. But I wanted to push it as far as the type could possibly go, but without actually um, losing sight of what it says. Um, another really important part of book design is the navigation system and how the book is structured. Uh, normally you find it in the top left hand corner or it can be some kind of decoration element within the page. But um, I really wanted to use the gutter of a book, which is essentially the bit right down the middle, when it's basically seen as a wasted space sometimes. Um, so I really wanted to use that as the main navigation system. So you, as you look through your book, you'll see these um, vertical lines running straight down the gutter. And also it gives a nice little twist so that um, you navigate the book by looking at the outer sections by the side of the spine. Um, another really important part of the book process is the photography. So every single photograph in the book is exclusive to the book. Um, I spent about a year photographing everything. And that's because I, I love all the projects that I've featured and I want to give them the most amount of respect and space to do this. Um, I got a lighting kit from the manufacturer called Bones which completely transformed the, um, the project. So I chose a, different um, a, a very cool colour palette which is consistent throughout and there's always a horizontal line so there are no kind of lines flowing off in different directions. So it's all about the artwork. And this is actually quite a rare thing to do for um, visual culture books because quite often you ex use the um, existing photography. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about some of my favourite items within the book. So I really love this by um, a studio in Hong Kong called Edited. It's called Shoku Orange. Um, the reason I really like it is because they've just used a hairline outline of um, an orange circle instead of using a full circle. You can't really see it in the slide, but it's actually filled with varnish as well. Really love the way that the type is just really lightly composed around the outside. And there's just that one flash of orange just on the outer edge of the book. I just think it's a really beautifully composed bit of work. I also really love these posters by Demi and Conrad Studio for the Art Bial Festival. Um, these are large formats, they're kind of like bus shelter size uh, posters, but they're screen printed, so screen printed onto fluorescent colours. So all the golds, the silvers and the um, sort of bronze colours are all hand printed, which in terms of pro production process, they're just like, it's amazing, it's outstanding. Um, but the thing that I really like about it is imagining them in a busy city centre. So if you're walking around and there's lots of visual noise and um, a lot of people on their phones and there's a lot of distraction, these will sit in the middle and they'll just be just that information, the geometric shapes, and I just imagine they'd really, really stand out. And I think they're beautiful. Um, this is one of my favourites from um, within the book. I'm really into music, so anything music design I'm a sucker for. So this is by the designer, a musician called Trevor Jackson. <coughs> for his um, book, his um, album called Format. You can buy this in two different uh, formats in itself. So every single track is recording onto a different format. So you've got VHS, you've got cassette, mini disc, vinyl, and also reel to reel cassette. Um, why I love this is there is no decoration whatsoever, it is all about the production. And also, you know, I can't imagine a lot of people have mini discs anymore, so finding someone to record it, let alone buy it, must have been a big issue. And I just love that it's all about um, the concept. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically an insight into my book. Um, I think what I'm trying to say with the whole book is the fact that if something looks effortless, it doesn't necessarily mean it was created with little effort. Um, so, thank you very much for letting me talk, and I hope you get a chance to look at the book. <laughs>